Hey, uh, just two videos ago I was uh, explaining uh, my success with one of my open source libraries and I got a comment right there uh, by uh, one of the readers and um, the reader is saying that um, coming up with small open source libraries uh, can be taken too far. For example, uh, there are many idiotic, I'm quoting, one-line JavaScript libraries on the APM and uh, such as, and there's an example. Uh, on two videos ago, I was explaining my success with the open source library. I was telling that I was able to create some small, really small uh, Ruby library and it got successful on GitHub. I collected over 60 uh, stars. I don't know how many it has right now. Uh, I guess even more. Uh, yeah, a little bit more. Uh, and it happened because because of this and that. I, I tried to explain that on the previous video. I was saying that uh, you should do the same. If you want to be successful on GitHub, uh, you should release as frequently as possible. Every time you see an opportunity to make an open source library, just do it. And uh, if you don't want that, then just close this video because I, I know that there are people who don't care about that, people who don't need uh, the popularity on GitHub. And uh, this video is not for them, definitely. If you don't need that, if you feel that open source world is not for you, just don't participate, that's fine. But if you feel that you have to be there and you should feel that way because the open source world is the future of software development. Sooner or later, the entire software landscape, the entire market of software will be open source. Well, the majority, the vast majority of software will be in open source. We will all have to be open source developers. And the, the sooner you start, the sooner you jump in, the sooner you create the GitHub account, and the sooner you start collecting those followers and stars and start making something in open source uh, for the open source community, the better for you, the better for your career. In five years, you will be thankful to me if you listen to this, to, to this advice right now. But this video is not about the recommendation. In general, I hope you agree that you need to be there. I decided to summarize what are the important uh, things you need to focus on in order to make your open source library successful. Like, how do you do that exactly? What needs to be done in order to collect 50 stars on GitHub in just a few weeks? Uh, and one of the things is that you, the first one is that you need to make your libraries small, like I said in the previous video. You have to make them small. And even if it has like just one line of code, one, two lines of code, it's not a problem. It's only good. The smaller the library, the better for its users. I'm a user of a library. If I open it, if I see that there are just one file or two files, and it's really small, compact, and uh, it only tells me that that stuff will work, that that stuff does something useful, and it's so compact, that it will not break, I mean, in most cases. I trust that library. I want to use it if I know that it's small. If I open something large and it's huge, it has like 100, li 100 files and thousands of lines of code, I, I'm not entirely sure unless I see a thousand stars or many thousands of stars of, uh, on the GitHub re repository, then I'm not sure that your monster application, your monster framework of the library will actually do what's promised. So I will be kind of skeptical. But if it's small, if it's like one line of code, like in this example, then I will def definitely, you know, check it out and I will use it. That's first, make it small. Second, try to make sure that your library does not depend on other libraries. The more dependencies you have, the more stuff I am as a user of your library we help, will have to pull into my project together with your library, the worse, the less are the chances that I'm gonna be the user of your stuff. If I open it up and I see that you depend on many other things, then it's a potential hassle for me, potential dependency hell in my repository, in my product, when I pull your stuff in. Recommendation number three is make sure your readme file is clear. I wrote a blog post about readme files. It's called Elegant uh, Readmes uh, just a few weeks ago. It is absolutely super important. When I look at that file, I that's my impression. I build my impression of your library. I decide whether I'm going to use that one or I'm going to jump somewhere else and try alternatives. And there are alternatives. And as I said, open source world is going to be bigger. It's growing and you will have alternatives for everything you create. So I will be thinking about, you know, which alternative to choose. And the more attractive, the more sexy that readme file looks to me, the more I'm into your library. So make it look sexy to me. How do you do that? Badges, make a nice looking, good looking logo. Uh, show me some examples of how it should be done. 
format it correctly, uh, pay attention to uh, you know uh, visual uh, the, the visuality of your uh, readme file. It's not just the text. Even though we are programmers, we're technical people, we don't care about aesthetics. We don't care about uh, graphics, but it's not true. We do care about that stuff. We need to be uh, attracted to you. I want to be attracted. I want your library to look, as I said, sexy to me. I want to feel, I want to fall in love with your library. And if it doesn't look that, if it's just a few lines of text or it doesn't, or, or it's not formatted correctly, then I don't, I don't, I'm not going to fall in love. Uh, point number four, of course, the documentation. I want to see that the documentation, documentation is as detailed as possible. Not because I want to read the documentation. I'm not going to read it entirely. I'm not going to, you know, but I want to read as less as possible, actually. I want to get your library, put it into my project, and just use it. The larger the documentation, um, the more it tells me that the project is properly supported. And I want the project to be supported. I don't want to use something which is going to be out of the market in a few months or in a year. I want to use something where people, the creators of the project, actually invested some you know, resources and they keep investing. So the more your documentation is uh, complete, the more it covers, the more textures they are, then the better for me because it tells me that the project is being supported, you know, uh, actively. Uh, point number five, of course, you need stars. You need GitHub stars. If I see a great library with two stars, I'm not going to use it because, because I don't trust it. Nobody actually tried it before. So I don't know whether it works, whether it does what it promises. So I kind of skeptical again about that. But if I see a hundred stars, no doubts, a hundred people actually said that, yeah, it's a good stuff, try use it. So the question is, how do you get those stars? And that's a, that's a problem for all the young programmers, for programmers who don't have any repositories right now, or, you know, they're just starting. I had the same problem like five years, six years ago, when I was just starting in open source territory, and I had no friends who would be able to give me those stars. I had no popularity, I had no followers. And it was, I remember it was so difficult. I was so happy when I got 10 stars on one of my projects in like four months or something like that. I was waiting and waiting and just in a, in a number of months, I was be able to collect like 10 stars. That was a great achievement. On one of the chats, I was telling about my repository and saying that, look I, how many stars I have. And somebody told me, yeah, that's because you're begging for stars on Twitter. Like they were accusing me for doing something you know, um, something, something dishonest probably or something which is, uh, you know, a person with self-respect would not, would not do. That's, that's wrong. That's, that's a false, uh, not the false accusation because really I was begging for stars. It's like a false way, way of thinking. You need to beg for stars. You need to do as much as you can to get those stars. Ask your friends, ask potential users, ask your Twitter followers, ask your boss, everybody, ask your fellow programmers, everybody you know, ask them to try your library or just give it a star. Of course, just, you know, fake stars is kind of against the policy of GitHub. I'm not suggesting you doing that, like, you know, asking random people, but promote your library. And every time you promote it, ask people not just to use it and walk away, but use it, try it and give me the star because every star you give me actually uh, increases the trust uh, my future potential users will give to my, to my library. So the more stars, the better for you. The next point is that, of course, your library, your product has to be in a public repository. I mean, GitHub is where the, the source code stays, but you need to deploy it to some uh, the, the place where uh, binary artifacts are placed. Like for Java, it's Maven Central. For Ruby, it's Ruby Jam. For JavaScript, it's uh, NPM. For each language, they have their own place where people publish their open source stuff. And if you don't publish it there and you ask me as a potential user to go to GitHub and check it out on my computer, compile it locally and then use it, I'm not going to do that. That's, that's a barrier for me between me and your library. I should be able to get it from a public repository. So always think about, start thinking when you start a library, the first thing you think about is how you deploy it and make sure from the first version, it is deployable, it's, it's publicly available. I can get it from the NPM, for example. The next point is continuous integration. Without a continuous integration, again, I don't trust your library. If I see that there is a GitHub repository, but there is no continuous integration, how do I know this stuff actually builds? How do I know that stuff actually works? You 
take me, you, you make me a tester if you don't do continuous integration, if you don't configure it. Because uh, who's going to check that the, the product actually works? It's going to be me. I will have to get it. I will have to put it into my project. I will have to compile or build everything. And then I will find out that, you know what, it doesn't work. That will take you know my time and my efforts and my resources. I don't want to do that. I want to see the continuous integration badge in your GitHub repository, like Travis, for example, or something else. And I'll click there and I see, okay, the latest build was like seven hours ago. Fine, that's good. I can use that library because at least it, it is buildable. So it's important. And of course, I don't mention that, but that's important to have unit tests. Of course, there is no continuous integration without unit tests. So create unit tests again to prove me to show me that your library is trustable and trust is almost everything in the open source world not trust you as a programmer i don't know you i don't care who you are i mean who is the developer of the library i care about the product and i want to trust that product and all i'm saying all i'm listing here are the things which will increase trust which will make me you know fall in love and trust your library uh, and the last point probably is that uh, you need to uh, demonstrate me as a potential user that you actually reply to issues and you work with pull requests and you are interactive, that the library is interactive. And if your library is small, and we're talking now about small libraries, of course, there will be no issues, not so many issues, because you're the only one developer and you create the library. And when I walk in, when I open it in GitHub, I see, okay, here's the readme file, here's continuous integration, it, it works, here's the documentation, I open issues, no issues. I open pull requests, no pull requests. It tells me that there is no interaction between potential users, former users, users from the past, and the developer of the library. So how do I know when I, I will find the bug and I will find the bug, how do I report that bug? Who's gonna reply to me? I don't see any history of replies. And most probably nobody will reply to me. And that's kind of scares me and turns me off. So you need to demonstrate me that there were issues before and there were pull requests. How to do that? Just make issues for yourself. When you work with the library, for every improvement, for every increment you do in your code, just create an issue and say, I'm planning to do this and that for yourself. And then you resolve that issue and you close it. You create pull requests, you resolve the issue, create a pull request, close the pull request by yourself. That will demonstrate that um, the project is interactive, that you as a developer interact with potential users. Of course, it will be obvious to me that you interacted, you were interacting with yourself, but I will see that you know how to use issues. That the moment I submit something new, you will be able to react and you know how to react. So you will be uh, supporting your product. That's what I think. That's pretty much I want. I was, you know, I was uh, going to tell you about those uh, GitHub libraries. Make them, try them, make them small, make as many as possible. One line, no problem. One line. It doesn't take a lot of resources. GitHub is not going to blame you for creating a repository of one line. Nobody going to blame you. They will blame you if you create a monster uh, library with a lot of binary files. They will take some, you know, server resources and then nobody going to use that. That will be uh, something which is, you know, not uh, welcome on GitHub. But if you make many small things, they will only attract more users to your account, more followers, and they will give you a huge career advantage against everybody else. You will be way more valuable programmer on the market. If you have many small, important uh, libraries, frameworks, products on GitHub. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.